Hi everyone and welcome to our presentation on peer tutoring by Shelby and Emily. Peer tutoring is one method to increase active student responding, or ASR, in the classroom. What is active student responding? ASR is an umbrella term that covers a multitude of activities designed to increase student response. While there are many practices and methods included in ASR, we will be discussing one that we have found to be the most beneficial for students with disabilities and English language learners. Peer tutoring is aimed to increase student participation in order to achieve understanding. This method has been proven to be an effective, evidence-based practice with the goal of comprehension, retention, and achievement in mind. What is peer tutoring? Peer tutoring consists of small groups of students working together. These groups can be strategically divided heterogeneously or homogeneously. We'll discuss the benefits of both groupings later on. Within these small groups, students are able to discuss, collaborate, work together to complete various assigned tasks, learn from each other by learning to teach and listen, hear information from a different perspective, ask and discuss questions creating a dialogue, and share and solidify their knowledge by coming to an agreement on answers and posed discussions. According to Tinkani and Twyman 2016, Peer tutoring is an effective method to use to increase student responding because it capitalizes on an existing classroom resource, the students. Peer tutoring is one of the most researched evidence-based practices, but not only does peer tutoring allow students to collaborate with each other, but it creates more opportunities to practice and allows students to help teach each other. There are many benefits of peer tutoring, and peer groups are beneficial across all subjects, can benefit students of all ages and both students with and without disabilities. This method can also be advantageous for students who are English language learners. A major benefit of peer groups is the ability for students to work together to problem solve. This can be beneficial by providing the opportunity to learn in a changed setting and targeting all learning preferences. One student may have picked up on something during the whole group instruction that another student may not have. Then, when split into groups, that student can help teach the other students in a different way. This method can give students the space and confidence to both teach and learn from each other, building on more than just their learning skills. In 2017, a massive study surveyed 58 groups of students in varying grades with disabilities such as behavioral disorders, learning disorders, autism, intellectual disabilities, ADHD, and even incarcerated students with disabilities. Research showed that when students with disabilities participated in peer tutoring in general subjects such as math, science, English, and history, nearly 100% of the time, students improved their performance. How does this method look in the classroom? Implementing these steps in any classroom that includes students with and without disabilities can provide a foundation for success. The implementation plan includes preparing materials, delivering instruction, grouping students strategically, monitoring students and their success, differentiating learning, and planning future lessons. For peer tutoring to run smoothly in your classroom, teachers must prep the small groups to be successful, which includes getting materials ready for each student. For example, in an English class, this could include creating vocabulary folders that contain vocabulary cards with vocab words on one side of the card with definitions on the other side. With these vocab cards, students are able to test their peers' knowledge of vocab and perhaps discuss different memorizing techniques that successful students use. Material can even be differentiated for the different levels of learning within your classroom. Based on group makeup and content being discussed, the teacher can have the necessary materials ready for students to begin learning. Once the materials are provided, the small groups or pairs of students will be all set to begin the group work, and this will allow students to immediately begin work and not waste time gathering materials. Next, the teacher must deliver the instructions of the task at hand. Before groups begin working, teachers should give students a goal to achieve during their group work. This could be in the form of learning targets, so every student knows what is expected of them to learn and understand when the class ends. The teacher could provide learning targets based on curriculum standards, and then the students can come up with their own goals based on what they feel they can accomplish in these small groups. The teacher needs to know where the class stands and how comfortable they are with the content and how they will, as small groups or pairs, build off of the instruction to gain a deeper understanding, comprehension, and active participation. Teachers can strategically group students for peer tutoring. Students can be grouped homogeneously, meaning all of the students in this group have similar skills and levels of learning, or students can be grouped heterogeneously, meaning the students within this group have different skills and levels of learning. 
Heterogeneous groups may include students with disabilities and students without disabilities together. The teacher groups students together strategically based on goals intended to be achieved throughout the activity and can be determined prior to the lesson by collaborating with special education teachers, general education teachers, counselors, administration, students, and librarians. Monitoring students is an important part of peer groups because even though students are given some interdependence in their learning, they may still need guidance. Because of this, teachers should be monitoring students throughout the peer group activity. This is to make sure that the pairs or small groups are working together, reviewing vocabulary, and quizzing each other with the double-sided vocabulary cards, for example. As the groups are facilitating their own discussion and review, teachers should assume the role as supervisor that moves students along or refocuses them if they get off of task. While the students are taking charge of their own learning in the setting, they may still need to be moved along and guided towards accomplishing their goals. As teachers are monitoring their classroom to make sure that everyone is staying focused and on track, teachers must also monitor student success. Teachers should be noting students' strengths and weaknesses of both the method of peer tutoring and group work and also the actual work conducted. An important part of monitoring success is checking student comprehension. A good way to do this collectively is by giving exit tickets to students at the end of class. This allows teachers to review class understanding and plan the next steps for future lessons based on the information left on the exit tickets. Teachers should review the learning targets and student-created goals as he or she checks for success. If it appears as though some students are falling behind, differentiated learning may be needed to be implemented, or in some cases, teachers should note that groups should be split differently for future lessons. Differentiated instruction is an essential part of teaching students of different learning levels. Differentiated instruction is when teachers respond to students' varying learning levels by providing students with different routes to understanding and ultimately success. Teachers can differentiate academic content, the learning process, and even a student's learning environment in order to create a more successful lesson. Differentiation for students with disabilities should be the result of collaboration between general education teachers and special education teachers. Additionally, peer groups may be determined to have a mix of student skill levels. Therefore, the content should be differentiated for all student success. It's important to remember that not all groups will have the same goals because not all students are the same. Each group may choose to discuss different aspects of the content and lead to different insights. This is one reason why this practice of peer tutoring can be so beneficial to increasing student participation and responding. Planning future lessons should be determined by the success or failure of the peer tutoring lesson. Assessing students' success after the activity is crucial in knowing if your students understood the content and whether or not expansion on the topic is needed for the next class. Again, this may be best measured by giving an exit ticket to students to be completed independently from the group. After collecting data through formative and summative assessment, such as the exit tickets, determine student success and base future lessons on the success or struggles from the peer tutoring activity. Positive results of peer tutoring can be collected and measured through inclusivity, which builds socialization and collaboration skills in students with and without disabilities, as it is socially beneficial for both groups of students to work together. When split into heterogeneous groups, students with and without disabilities are learning from each other and working together to problem solve. This teamwork teaches compassion, cohesiveness, and acceptance among students, a valuable skill in our ever-inclusive world. Because students are working with other students and are learning from each other, formative assessments can yield positive results demonstrating the gained knowledge in students. We hope that you're now well versed in peer tutoring and can apply this beneficial learning method to students in your own classroom.